I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 50% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code SHAMELESSSEX at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Baby, it's cold outside. I gotta go away. Baby, it's cold outside. This evening has been, been hoping that you dropped in. So very nice. Is it starting? Yeah, we're oh. recording right now. Oh. That's awesome. That's really good. So this song you said is kind of rapey. Is that what you just said? I'll earlier? hold your hands. They're just like ice. Uh, I was telling you about this song. It was slightly it's like coercion. We shouldn't call it rapey. That's a little bit Sorry, of an coercion. Over, that's uh, not a holiday pushy? friendly term right now. Amy. We're here to talk about holiday fun, <laughs> keeping it hot when it's cold outside and not rapey things. We're talking about only <laughs> consent and Peace and love and joy and lots of orgasms. If you look at the lyrics, though, to this song, Baby It's Cold Outside, which I believe it's Dean Martin and some probably unknown human that was (laughs) not represented properly, and maybe she was, uh, but she says something, my mother will start to worry. (laughs) And he's like, beautiful, what's your hurry? (laughs) Hey, baby. Hey, baby, my father will be pacing the floor. And then he's like, listen to the flyer place roar. (laughs) So I'm just saying... um, so I really like I'm not listening scurry. to you. I really want you to stay and keep me warm. Yeah, I'm which real is cold. what <laughs> I know that we're doing right now with our mad fireplace roar Ooh. in my uh, non fireplace apt home. Yes. So we have that raging on the TV right now. Yes, we do. So we are here to talk about it's the holidays, everyone. So we're here to talk about how to keep it hot when it's cold outside. And these are hot tips for warming things up. And this is going to be everything from some easy, fun, free things that you can do at home for yourself, for a lover, uh, for the holidays, for the winter, whatever you want to do and spice things up. And we'll give you some tips. And then we also have some product recommendations if you want to buy some sexy toys for the holidays. And I want to say if you're in Australia, just refer to this episode in July. Okay, <laughs> So it's still going to be good for you because... It'll be it's cold, cold there. Yeah, there you go. So yeah. that's right. And we do represent your toilet spinning in, in the opposite directions of ours. Does that really happen? I believe so. Really? I've been to Australia many times. Did you I, pay attention? I don't know. I don't know what whether it I spins. thought that was a joke, like from I, Wayne's World or something. It might it might be, <laughs> and I might just feel like Someone that's write the us, okay. We want to know if you live in Australia, will you please respond as your toilet counterclockwise <laughs> or clockwise? We need to know. Yeah, yeah. Wait, does what does ours do? Clockwise, right? I believe so. Okay. So the clocks might spin attention. counterclockwise <laughs> in Australia too. Are you getting younger in Australia right now? New Zealand, even younger? Going backwards. Fiji, probably younger. Probably younger. Ooh, yeah, the humidity. <laughs> Good for the skin. Uh, okay, so, uh, April, I think that you have something fun you want to share with us, some hot tips to keep it cold. Okay. Or so, no, no, sorry, not, not to keep it cold. <laughs> when it's cold. <laughs> Although, I don't know, maybe we can add some ice cubes to this mix. We could, I think so. I think you are good at adding ice cubes to the mix. You make a good drink, but not right now. No, I'm sobs. You're so obsessed. I'm doing uh, what most people are like, what the fuck are you doing this in December for? I'm doing uh, sober-ish December, meaning the ish is it's from Thanksgiving to Christmas Eve. It probably wasn't a lot of people. It was probably just me like 15 times. No, I heard that from multiple people. <laughs> okay, like, good. Don't people wait till January to do this? And I was like, nope, the time is now. And I want to do a little check-in. I also, I think I said this on a past podcast, actually. I have some other health stuff. Um, gene- I have genetic health stuff um and it's related to various organs in my body that was like might as well detox for a little bit and give them a break as i start to go on this medication i am so. so proud of you thank for you for doing that by the way and i do want to say that you have a subtle glow that Ooh. is maximizing every night it's two weeks i think that you haven't drank any alcohol yeah, I haven't touched and it. you are phenomenally really in tune and i've been drinking wine and i'm like god damn it amy's gonna she's like Cra- she doesn't crack the whip ever, everyone. Wait, but I, get I it love together, you. Chip. Yeah. You're like very. You're just in tune, and and I I love you like this, and I love you anyway. Yeah. And I just want to say that 
Maybe maybe I should She loves practice. it when I drink the wine. Is it on the wagon or off the wagon? I can never remember. I'm on the wagon okay. and you're off the wagon. I fell and off I, the wagon. And I have oh, yeah. spidey senses right now. So anytime I'm near someone who's drinking alcohol, I can smell every drop of them. I'm like, whoa. Ditch. Can you smell anything else? I feel like right when I walked up to your door, I could smell alcohol. <laughs> I haven't drank that much. Was your business partner for your other business drinking too? Yes, because they she were was. outside. Yes, so she that's was. why. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, was, I don't feel. And I'm not judging. I'm just like. And it, yeah, part of me is like, that sounds kind of nice. But nope, I'm committed for 30 days. So it feels good. I'm very proud of you. Anyway, so what we're talking about here, yeah. other than the um, alcoholic tip here, oh, is yeah. which this is a time where folks do drink more. I know that every year around the holidays, meaning in my holiday realm, I consider that from Thanksgiving until Christmas, really. What New, Year's New Year's, yeah. Also. And um, for me, I think... Growing up in the Midwest, when it's cold, I think about food and comfort food. I've been drinking hot chocolate. Mm. I get like the really yummy and I, I actually get whipped cream <gasps> and I never marshmallows? do that. I don't do marshmallows. I just don't like the texture personally. Mm. However, yes, I, I concur that that's a great decision if you want to do that. So I say, though, what helps me in this time is even though it's it's darker, longer, the, the days are getting shorter. And instead of eating all the comfort food that what I really would love to eat, I think that, yes, watching movies and, and being with your partner and cuddling up and eating a bunch is great. And it's also a time where you can think about maybe making an intimate little evening mm-hmm. or multiple evenings where instead of drinking all the hot chocolate or the wine or the booze or eating uh, all the pizza, all, all the pizza, the marshmallows and <laughs> mac and cheese and the things that you probably want to put on the winter warmth because that's a thing. Instead, think about if you have children when the kids go to bed or if you have a, a ton of work the next day, whatever that is, slip it away, put it in the closet for the night. The children don't put it in the closet. We don't <laughs> recommend that. They, they might not like that. Uh, but like, Tap in if you have a partner or partners or you're even single. Tap in if you don't have a fireplace. Put on the fireplace app. There's a fire. It's I a bet free you app. Put on, you put it on your TV, but I bet you could do even on a laptop. On a laptop, probably. whatever you yeah. have. Or if you have a fireplace, build a fire or turn it on elect- electrically. Unless you're Amy and she almost made her house blow up. Yeah, electric fireplace <laughs> is not a good idea. Yeah. It's now like a lawn ornament like, in my what backyard. What happened to that? She's like, oh, I my fireplace blew up. I was like, oh my God, the fears blew. So the, the whole thing is to get together with the one you love, the ones you love, and talk about your intimate desires. Now, this can sound really heavy. Don't ha- You don't have to get too caught up in it. But what about your fantasies? Mm, we just uh, did an episode on fantasies with just, Dr. Yes. Allison Ash, the last one of so that was this this last Tuesday. So this is coming out December 10th. So I think it's a December is that 6th or 7th release. Anyways, it was out and it's amazing. And, yeah. and exactly. So you can listen to that episode. That was a great episode. The point of this whole, this word, th- these words of wisdom are to really focus on not what externalities are going on, not what you have or have not or what you're feeling, but laying off maybe some of the deep comforting food that you've been eating or the alcoholic beverages that do comfort you as well or whatever else you're maybe the mindless chatter on social media, taking all that away, being with yourself or with your partner, turning on something cozy like a fireplace app, and mm. then dropping in with your loved ones or without yourself. anything else. Ooh, you like your or with your exactly. And I think that piece is what's I've I've been doing that in the last two weeks because it's mm. been dark so early and I'm like, it's 10 o'clock. No, it's not 10 o'clock. It's 5 15. <laughs> Why am I so wanting to I just want to like put in a pizza and and really digress from anything else that is pleasure. And it has been helpful for me to really drop into that. Mm -hmm. So that's my recommendation and what's been helping me. And you probably have a lot more because you've been telling me some of your tips and I'm like, yes, yes. And you're like, you're going to love this one. I'm like, I love it. Well, what I'll add to what you said too, as you being in this sober place for this month, um, I, and so I'm, um, experiencing complete sober. I'm not altering my state w- with anything at all for, for this month. And um, I am still having sex, you know, during this time. I'm not, so I guess I am altering my state with sex and that's 
cool. That's my one drug that I can have, sex. I I, I honor that. But I having good choice. sex, it's not that I drink or consume anything every time I have sex. And I think that when you have this um, long t- longer time period of not having anything altering your system and then you have sex, and I've been meditating a lot too, like morning and night often, like twice a day, um, that my sex is amazing. Like all my sensations are so alive. It's more alive than I am, than I have been in a long time. It feels incredible. So I'm just kind of learning some balance there. So just, there's another thing about that, that you can, if you were like, fuck sobriety. Um, Spidey senses. Yeah, even if you just do it for a couple days, it can enhance your senses, add some meditation. Anyways, okay, so let's add some more fun. All the sober tips. people out there are like, I feel that way all the all time. The time. Yeah. Surprise! Good for you. Yeah, you guys, <laughs> you guys were right. Uh, so keep it hot when it's cold outside. Okay, here's one that I know that April will love. So April's loves letters and cards she loves when people write her, her letters words and cards. of affirmation which i'm really bad at doing when it's people's you know birthday or holidays i, I write hey, i love you happy birthday or whatever. well love you me. have bad writing that's true. and that's why terrible. all geniuses have bad writing in my opinion so then you could type a letter or a card <laughs> things to april <laughs> I, I have terrible writing too by no, the way no your writing is actually pretty good i've had you write things for me oh. so here's a here's a fun free idea for you to give to someone that you care about or you love or you could write this to yourself too um, write a love letter or a card and you can give it as a gift or just don't, it doesn't even have to just be the holidays. You can do this any old time and you could write out today. I choose you because, and you can list all of the reasons why you choose this person in this day. And you could do it for yourself. You're a single person looking to fall in love with yourself today. I choose me because I write out all of the wonderful qualities, everything from, I like that you love pizza. I love the way you walk. I, you have the best ass I've ever seen. I love the way you whisper sweet nothings in my Aww, ear. I love the I smell of your this. breath. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe someone does. I'm not sure. And it could just be one word too. Totally. Which I love. And this is something I actually learned this I, uh, from a friend years ago. They, they taught me this, this thing as a daily practice where you wake up and you either send a text message or you turn to a partner uh, and say, today I choose you because, and then it can be really short, but I'm, inviting an extended version of it. What a wonder, how great would that be to receive a card that had this long list with all these reasons why this person's choosing you today? Or you could write it to yourself and then mail it to yourself. <laughs> Wait, no, that wouldn't work. How would you make it so you could get it in you a year? You could just write a post or, or in a mm, year. You yeah. could bury it somewhere where you wouldn't expect to find it for a while. Like, <laughs> like if a you shoe don't, box? Yeah, or a shoe box or don't talk about my shoes right now. <laughs> don't do it. Shoes. Don't do it. Shoes. Uh, <laughs> like lots or, of shoes. I, I wanted to bring this to a, another point though, bearing it somewhere, yes. But like also I received a message from a friend today that I hadn't heard from in a long time that just said, I love you. Aww. And so if you're in a long distance relationship or maybe you're just, you've had deep love for someone for a long time, whether it's in, in partnership or sexy ship or however that looks, that's really, it's really powerful to just shoot out a message I mean, if you have their address, sending them a written card is really magical too. I love this idea. Yeah, that is. But Maybe writing I'll do it something. For you, Chip, for the you live down the block. I would. I would actually be very excited. I if mail you it did to that. you for my house. Yeah, two, two just a picture away. of you smiling. Like, <laughs> hi, I love you. I'd be like, I love here's all the you reasons too. why I love you, Chip. Well, so on on that note, another idea is this something you could put in a letter or a card. Again, a, a, a totally free idea for you to gift something to a lover or partner. Um, Oregon yourself is uh, what I like to call king or queen for a day or um, jester or something that's non-gendered, but something that's more like I'm going to worship you for the day, basically. Court member. Jester. <laughs> the, you're the clown. <laughs> hey, I'm going to make you the clown for the day. I would be if someone said that, I'd be stoked. You, so I'm going to you have to go everywhere with me all day and entertain me all day. That sounds awesome. I actually, I would <laughs> Wait, not. That's my life already. You challenge, <laughs> you challenge me with this. I will you take are that challenge. You already doing that. <laughs> I see you a jester and I raise you a queen. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> what you could do is, all right, hey, so so you give this on the holidays and you're like, um, January 12th, reserve that day from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. because I'm going to surprise you and wine and dine you and pamper you all, all during that whole time. And so your partner reserves that time, but they have no idea what's happening. And then you make up this glorious day. What is it? Do you give them a sponge bath? Do you lay rose petals down as they walk in? Do you take them out to some beautiful restaurant they've always wanted to go to, but don't just go to a restaurant and a movie, do something that's embodied. You know, do you give them a full body erotic massage? Or maybe you just do the laundry or something that day. Yeah. Something or that you, you don't them, normally or you do. Saying, like facials and pedicure. There's so many things that you can do. Just think of what would really make my partner feel so loved. And this might be really tapping into their love languages. Like you're saying, is it acts of service? Yeah, do the dishes, but maybe do them naked so that they can watch you. This brings me to one other piece that I want to share, which is also free something that is slightly 
incredible to to me and and I'm not speaking for just myself here but I know other friends that have the same thing I think you're actually one of them that's spoken to this is the gifts that don't cost money but that you find along the way that remind you of the person that you're thinking of or love it could be a feather that you pick Mm -hmm. up on the ground or a rock that you find those are things where you're like hey I know this is like random but I saw this this I don't know, this newspaper article and I cut it out and wanted to show you because I, I just love you. Mm, and I thought of you. I yeah. thought of you. And I, I love those. I love those things that are so, they're so small and they're free, really. Mm. And that you just, it was with intention. And I know that other folks out there may or may not resonate with that. If this isn't your love language, the gift giving, you might yeah, be like, it's not really mine. Yeah. But I like being thought of like, yeah. someone thinking of me. okay. What about, what if I masturbate and I squirt all over the bed and I send you a photo of that? And it's like thought of you. No. Would it include your <laughs> genitals or not? No, just a squirt. All okay. Over. That's fine. I don't need a picture <laughs> of your genitals because I, I love them. But from what I've seen, thought of you when I juiced all over the bed, I would be like, why did you think of that? <laughs> I see your face in the puddle. It's like the shape of your face. <laughs> it's like the Jesus face in the cr- in the clouds, <laughs> or like a dog's butt. <laughs> You've seen the pictures. All right. I like how you're comparing my face to a dog's butt. Thank you. And moving on from right. there, another free idea <laughs> um, taken also from another guest that we just had on the show, our dear friend Ian Stratton, who was just on our show in the last couple weeks, who told me that um, he do- he does this practice with his partner, and it's not just a gift for the holidays or anything. I was comparing it to a white. He told both of us about this. It's not and- brownies. It's a different one. Oh, Oh, it's a di- oh, he different. told you, but I was talking about the whiteboard brownie thing. Oh, so it's different. Oh, yeah, different. No, that okay, whiteboard sorry, brownies so I'm in, in the episode, which okay. is fun. That one's awesome. They're like, how can we make it competitive? But <laughs> of course, but no, this one is, um, I don't know how he phrased it, but it was how um, it's all about you day. And so for a day, we're going to spend you. So this is you and I, I give this to you, April. We're going to spend this day together and I'm going to do whatever you want all day. And you get to decide what we do. I was just thinking about this last <laughs> night, how you always turn everything into you and I. And I'm like, everyone who thinks we're like total lesbians, which I totally will honor it. every day. Or they think we're just like closeted lesbians <laughs> that just love each I'm like, no, like, we're just sisters fuck forever. each other already. I was thinking about this last night. I was like, we pretty much are. We're together. We're a partnership. We just don't ever fuck. I squirt. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made her uncomfortable. Okay, so now. give the scenario again. Now. Set the scene because I just was, I so had April to and I are in a relationship <laughs> and I'm going to give her this maybe in a letter or a card for the holidays. And all right, April, you choose the date. I'll check on my calendar, make sure I can do it. But it's going to be all about you day. So from 10 a.m. until we go to sleep, you get to decide what we do all day. And of course, if there's a hard note, like you want me to skydive and I'm terrified, I might not do it but you get to kind of map it out and and it's not that i'm treating you all day it's that i'm taking you going on this journey with you as your companion and i'm not like a stick in the mud like and ah, let's do me you know it just gets to be about you okay so i have a question for you then yes will you marry me yes i will <laughs> <laughs> sold we're gonna do this yeah you're the, you're exactly what i've been looking for <laughs> i can write you letters <laughs> i thinking when i score we just need to get you a big strap on okay <laughs> and then we're good we have talked about that a lot we're like you know life would be a lot easier if we i know just there's something about other. me that needs like this i love the a big old dick <laughs> well, you know what? There's two things that big old, not necessarily <laughs> important. She actually dick. doesn't like big dicks either. So not shaming big dicks, but you're like, I have a small pussy. So, <laughs> well, the thing is, is that that's also not on the free list. We could still, we could free. still get you a strap on that has a small enough dick. That's true. It still doesn't go from soft to hard. I like that or soft to soft, but I just like the, the option. I can get a soft pack and then I can <laughs> switch them <laughs> when you're not looking. Right, sold. You know what? Sorry, Amy's partner. I just asked her to marry me. She said, Oh, no, there's room for him too. Not yet. You'd be my side. She said, Not yet. <laughs> my side piece. <laughs> Just kidding, partner. You're not my side piece. I love you. <laughs> he listens to a lot of the episodes. So. He's going to listen to this. He's going to text if me later. If there's one episode you want to listen to, partner, it's this one. <laughs> okay, uh, I have one more. We digress. One more, a free one. I'm going to say you, but I'm not trying to shame you. So I'm saying we digress. <laughs> we digress. And I speak French now. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, one more free one, and then April has a couple, and then we'll move into some toys. Um, uh, also, on the note of writing, uh, what about writing an erotic story together? And you can do this in a couple ways. You could sit down and write an erotic story that's like your fantasies put together, and maybe you take turns. So someone with a good handwriting or the great typer writes. Hold on, I'm almost done. And you take turns. <laughs> I'll just let me throw these out. And so they they write. And maybe I talk for a minute and they write it and then they add on to it. And we do this like back and forth thing. Or we write out a past thing that we did that we both really loved and we rewrite it. What do you got? I know you got one over there. Well, I wanted to just to to add to this. 
that you if you aren't a fast typer or writer Ooh. by hand how what did i introduce you to translation services the tra- well not even <laughs> you use the in your notes yeah. if you have well i'm talking from an ios so from an iphone standpoint if you have a, an android i'm sure there's a similar there's a similar app but you can you can speak into the it writes it for you yeah. Yeah, yeah and and now you've used it so if you aren't good because i'm just thinking about like my mom or some folks that just don't type quickly that could be really cool where you speak into it into each other's phones or something. That yeah. could be a really cool collective thing or a Mad Libs piece. Ooh. I don't know. That just really excited me. So I didn't know that you were going to say that, even though it's on her list of things to talk about. Yeah. And I'm really excited by that because that's hot. We could do that after this. Yeah. After you say I do. After I say, <laughs> I already do. oh, I got to really say I do like a ring on it and things. No, no. I don't believe in rings. Oh, okay. I well, believe in things. I want a ring. <laughs> <laughs> so no, thank you. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you saw my excitement. What do you, how do you feel about that using that? I like it. That well, app. I was also thinking if you, if you wrote it out, then one of you or both of you could read, like, I remember our friend who just did the raps and had a friend rap this thing that, that she wrote so what if you wrote it out but then you actually recorded it with a sexy voice and then you sent it to your partner you do all these things just get creative and these are all gifts that you can give that cost baby no it's money. cold outside I think you have one that I really like that I you really share. can't stay yes you can you have to stay with me I that's just like the song that we were talking about in the beginning okay <laughs> so this was an idea Amy and I were talking about free the free I think the freedom and and having things that don't cost money are really important to bring. And if you live in a household and you have kitchen stuff, utensils, cutlery, however you want to call it, depending on where you are, there's access to things. And one thing we talked about before this was a sexy treasure hunt Ooh. where individually you could collectively say, if if Amy and I, which I really we're wasn't proposing, yeah. but if we were in a relationship, we're going to use this, set the scene again. We're role playing right now. Amy and I are in a relationship or Amy, her name's Frank right now. Okay. Hi, I'm Frank. Hi, Frank. (laughs) Uh, So we are in a relationship and I'm like, let's do this scene. It can be fun and playful and not super serious where we find the kitchen utensils or the things, household goods that would be, that are safe, right? So nothing that we're going to stick in our butt that isn't anal safe, Uh -uh. but things that we could use that could be sexy devices that are free. So like tongs, kinky devices, kinky devices, station play stuff. Yes. And that's what we did. Amy and I played this out before we recorded this because uh, she was like, well, open up the, the drawer. What do you have? And I pulled out, the pizza roller, the pizza cutter, which you were like, that's a perfect pinwheel that you never had. Yeah. Which, what, tell p- folks what a pinwheel is. So a pinwheel in the kink world is smaller than a pizza cutter, but uh, pizza roller, but it's something that is this little, almost looks like this, is it spur? Is it the, on a boot, on a cowboy yeah, boot? Yeah, spurs, exactly. And it's there, so this looks sharp, but and you don't stab anyone with it, but you run it along their body and it can add this wonderful sensation that's prickly, cold, tingly, maybe a, a little bite to it, but you're not like c- cutting and them. You could put it in the freezer if you want wanted it to be cold to the refrigerator if you don't want it to be frozen to add Ooh. the sensation play and then we thought about uh well if people have anything that, that the dusters the feather dusters or even one of those swiffer whatever sweeper things Ooh. that are like a tickler able, yeah, yeah. That you could use it on your body as a tickler hopefully it's free of dust if you're like me i wouldn't like that be, oh my god but Where is that bit? some other people might be into that which is cool or tongs that you can pick up for a barbecue or if you're from Wisconsin for a cookout <laughs> and you, you use those to pick up different things. You could use those as nipple pinchers. Ooh, uh, what we also ball pinchers. Or, ball, or pinch ball pinchers, uh, <laughs> gently, or unless your partner wants harder, or yourself. Uh, spatulas, hair brushes as a spanker, the oh, back yeah. of it. Uh, and you talked about bristles for stimulation. Yeah, like the on the the brush, a hairbrush, or even like a comb or something. The textures of the 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 bristle things on there that you can use that on the body and it would add a different sensation. And uh, we also put duct tape on here, which is kind of fucked up. And I don't highly. I, don't I said really super glue too. I was like, what about <laughs> super glue? We're like, if your partner talks too much, just gorilla glue your ass to the toilet seat for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. 
gosh. Yeah, if your partner talks too much, no. That uh, is, yeah. we don't can we I, we don't really condone this unless they want tape, it. Yeah, yes. handcuffs or unless you want to do a wax job, but it's dangerous. Um, but so here's some the ideas that you said that they're in your house. So you do, you do this fun treasure hunt. Maybe set a timer. Maybe it's like we all go, we run around on our own, and we all come collectively with items. Or what if we come with these items together, but they don't? You, we don't get to see what the other one has, and then we blindfold each other and we use them and each other have to guess what they are in a sexy way though that's see this is the should we do it now we gotta go that's <laughs> but that's playful and fun because yeah. i have now that we're talking about this i'm looking at my little my vase over there with the the little i don't know what those things are called the the fronds yeah. um the hans and fronds over hans there and hans and fronds it's like right yeah, there i don't even know what those you could like use those they're they're plant weed, they're it's a plant like things that are soft it's a fo- it's actually real but they're dried plants there's things that you could use all over your house that i'm sure you could find as sensation play yeah and gentle sensation play we don't recommend at least at this point uh because i don't know what you're holding in your hand if you are doing this right now sticking anything in your orifices uh because they may or may not be they they may be uh, uh, unsafe yeah. or they may be able to be sucked into your butthole and you don't want that. Yeah. Do not call us if the fire or, department comes, okay? We yeah. do not know if 911 is the digit for rescue in your country. <laughs> if something gets sucked in your butt, please go get help uh, <laughs> because don't let that hang out too long. So we also talked about this other thing. So on another note, so aside from this, which I thought you, you liked and we both were, I, I like when we congregate for the, we don't do these podcasts very often. No. They're really fun. Most of our podcasts have guests it's just you and i and just uh, getting april creative and amy be <laughs> yeah be like amy and april the old days chipping day up yep in full force shake and bake shake baby and shake bake. and bake <laughs> so don't use that for lube by the way not yeah. not really good no to gracious. use shake and bake for lube so we talked about and and we and we've talked about this before on multiple shows the things from our past are maybe when we were in the pubescent stage or the stage, maybe depending on when you started maturing and thinking about sex and whether or not you were a teenager, whatever age you were, every human is different. You were, may have been in your 30s. Who knows? But the things, the imagery from magazines, you could have looked at a JCPenney catalog Ooh. or a Victoria's Secret catalog and... We're not sponsored by either of those. What about Mervins? You could look at Mervins. (laughs) You could look at Marshalls. You're like, oh, that, that, those tits on that section three, eight were nice. (laughs) I have no idea. Whatever you got off on, and I won't name names, but someone in my family, I, I did find a, a uh, magazine at some point under the bed where I was like, oh, why do you have the J.C. Penny catalog open to the, the, uh, the bra section, the bra section. (laughs) And I didn't realize then because I was very young, but what that meant, uh, I was referring to myself thinking about movies. I used to find VHS tapes and pop those in and they were sometimes rated R, sometimes PG-13, but scenes from those movies that I would remember where to rewind them to or fast forward to like Fatal Attraction. And I don't know if you've, have you seen that movie? Yeah, I think so. Remember when uh, it was uh, Michael Douglas Mm -hmm. and he was like with Glenn Close. I don't remember their names in the movie, but um, they were fucking in the kitchen on the the first time they met and they actually had the affair because his wife was out of town with the kids oh. and they were having sex on the stove in her apartment on the top and I remember I was very young I was not supposed to watch that movie it was rated R it was in the section where I was not supposed to watch but I was like watch on watch on this one and I popped it into the VHS cassette player and I started watching I was like nothing's happening nothing's, and I was like oh damn so bring it back to what we're talking about Talking about with your partner, finding images, or a go- if there was a Playboy that you loved, or a, a, you were talking about celebrities, some some spank bank material that you had from back in the day yeah. or present day. It's like you're going in a time machine and yeah. reliving it. But you, this Farrah Fawcett's you, poster, Farrah yeah. Fawcett's poster from 1968. And then, and then sharing it with your partner, like, this is what I used to wink to or get excited about or get aroused to. And maybe you didn't actually masturbate. But like for me, my, uh, and you know, we have YouTube now, right? Little clips of everything is on there. And I haven't looked into this, but um, I'm pretty sure 
I could probably find clips of Melrose Place. If anyone remembers Melrose Place, that is where I first learned that I am into dominance and submission, uh, specifically from a rape scene, actually, um, that turned me on at age 10. And I'm sure I could find that and that'd be fun to relive. And Trigger then, warning for anyone. Yes. That. Oh, yeah. We just talked about this in the fantasies episode, by the way. We did do a trigger warning on that and uh, and talked about that. And, and fantasies, as she says, they are, are our own and they can be anything and everything. There's a difference between fantasy and what we actually want to happen. Uh, but at any rate, I like this idea. Um, I, you know, one thing I used to also do, uh, you and I talked about this. We used to go and find our mom's like joy of sex or Kama Sutra books and just look at them and get turned on. Not together. We did that separately. <laughs> um, and then I remember I had also had a family member who um, always had a bunch of playboys and so it was like naked women. And I, and I, I don't know if I actually got turned on, but it excited me to look at it because it was like just so different from anything I'd ever seen. I also had the, I never had access to Hustler magazines when I was younger. There were Playboys from time to time at various friends' houses. I don't remember how I'd come across them. And you and I also talked about the Kama Sutra books mm -hmm. that were kind of like the, the, they were illustrative, but they were kind of the old school Kama Sutra books that probably a lot of parents had back in that time frame. I used to look at those and get really turned on by the, the depiction of like the illustrative depictions. And I think it might've been because Kama Sutra, I think it, it's from the East. So it was very old Eastern, I don't know, graphics. And it wasn't, I don't, it was, I don't know how to explain it. It looked like it could be on the side of a cave mm. um, and not high. And it turned you on? It, for some reason it did. And I'm still porn, like, not pornographic, was, but erotic. It was erotic. But I was so young. I mean, I was definitely below 11 years old. And I remember wanking to the, to those things. And by the way, if you do Google Melrose Place um, rape scene, you will find what oh. they were talking about. And remember, this is not a full-blown rape scene. It was a, a scene that you uh, had in your spank bank that was a power. It was a power dynamic. And it, it was, was just PG. just something I saw that I felt some pulsing in my pussy when I saw it. And I was like, wow, I'm really excited by this thing. And that is completely normal yeah, you know, for, for me. Like, I mean, I, I'm not saying that everyone does it, but there's nothing wrong with me. Um, and we talk about that in the fantasies episode. Yeah. Too. That's a good point. And yeah. it's that's a, that's another, those are two good points that there's nothing wrong with Or it. like to be a feminist and be into dominance and submission porn where women are getting beat up in the porn, but it still turns you on. Nothing wrong with you. That, yes, it's confusing. And does it mean that you want it to happen in real life or that you you want that to happen to other people in real life? No, it's fantasy. So anyways, that was a um, tangent there. No, but yeah. that was, but that's important. Yeah. That's like the, when I, and, and when we, we just did our book proposal, which we sent in and Amy and I both got really deep into our, some of our own stories about mm -hmm. our sexual upbringings and whatnot, uh, meaning and whatnot, there's a lot. Uh -huh. to talk about. So we're not going to talk about that experiences, not all great experiences. And I remember the first time that I really ever saw anything remotely pornographic, meaning I had already been watching these scenes from different movies, whether it was pretty woman or uh, fatal attraction or what uh, HBO that at night, like the sex, the real, real sex or something. It was mm -hmm. like real sex. It was in the nineties. Mm -hmm. Whenever I had access to HBO, I'd be like, Oh my God, let me see these things that were going on. But I remember putting in a, a VHS tape, another one of my mom thinking it was days of, days of our lives. Not my, it was of my mom's. Mm -hmm. It wasn't of my mother. Believe me, she would never do that. Um, she's way too. And we're not judging people to do that. Her mom just wouldn't. <laughs> no, my mom wouldn't. Uh, so I, uh, just correcting myself here, but pop popping that in the first porn I ever really saw was this gang bang scene of these six dudes gang banging this woman on a pool table and it was an accidental it was on a tape that said days of our lives because my mom loved soap operas and i popped it in to find uh the, the operative point where i could tape over my mom's soap operas without her getting mad and then when it came onto this porn i was probably eight years old i was like jackpot mm -hmm. and that was my go-to for years Score. until it disappeared and then i was so sad but that's what i'm saying also it's a gang bang scene that could be really offensive to some people totally just like a melrose place the the rape scene just like all of these things and for me it was it was me consensually watching that it was you consensually watching that and uh yeah 
I think that is important to address. Yeah, for sure. And we're all so different and our spank banks are so different. The things we used to masturbate to back in the day. I think it's just a fun idea to revisit these things. Like, oh my God. I, and I also wonder, would I get aroused? Like if I watch that scene, am I going to get turned on the way I used to? Ooh. Or am, have I changed? So fun, fun thing to revisit. This is maybe isn't a gift idea, but it's a fun thing to share. We're just talking about ways to spice things up and also gift ideas, which brings us to... Let's talk about some sex toys. Are you ready to talk about some sex toys? I, that's like my forte. Yeah, I think you just burned out a sex toy. You're just telling me you need, we need to get you some new I ones. Actually, I actually did. <laughs> She's Thank been you. baiting a lot over here. She's not shaming me. She's just calling me out on that. She's right. Well, maybe. I burned that shit out. I think it's five years old now, so yeah. Yeah, well, maybe I'll get you a like a kitten naughty or nice couples box for us because we're in a couple, you know? <laughs> so for, you can, you, we can use these together. I do. Yeah. I do want one. So, and I do say yes to you. Well, one of the things in the box, so, no, so like a kitten we love like a kitten uh, we have received their toys and worked with them for years um, and they are a wonderful wonderful company that is a woman owned and operated actually mother daughter team which I can relate to because I'm a mother daughter team with my mom and like a kitten offers these holiday naughty or nice couples boxes they are so adorable when they arrive it's this, this full scale box that has all the goodies that you could possibly want to play with and spice things up and I love their screaming O panty vibe that you can wear in your panties so it's a vibe that slips right in and then you wear it and you cruise around and your partner can vibrate you anywhere, anytime. Well, I mean, they have to be there with you because as a remote controlled disguise as a finger ring and they can, and then I'm like, oh, out in public or maybe just walking down the street. Maybe we're at, maybe we're at Christmas dinner and I give them the remote and they vibrate me. Hey, I, I, I think that's actually <laughs> quite fun and playful, which is kind of how our MO is. And this, we're specifically talking about, Like a Kitten has a lot of awesome offerings, but this is specifically for the holidays. It's called the Naughty and Nice Box. Uh -huh, that was just one thing this in the box. one thing in the box. They have a ton of different stuff, and we're, we're going to give you some info to that. One of the things that I really loved from the box is the gold. They're they're from Bijou Indiscrets, which we've also been fans of. I love yes. the women that also own that women company. Yeah, right. from Barcelona, mm -hmm. uh, they make beautiful. Uh, like so, for year, when we were at Pure Pleasure, the store when mm -hmm. I worked at the store, I loved their stuff. I would buy their stuff, and now they've just evolved. And these handcuffs, they're gold handcuffs. So handcuffs are uncomfortable as fuck. The real yeah, the ones that are designed as traditional handcuffs, they hurt. They, they leave hurt. marks unless you're into the pain thing. They're not that great. They could, I I have like really bony. Uh, wrists too. and they bruise me. These cuffs have like this gentle, I don't want to call it almost beaded metal little beads and you can unlink them so they look like bracelets. They're gold. They're so I feel like luxurious, but they're still sexy mm -hmm. and it's slightly, uh, it's it's kinky depending on how the level you want to go, but they I would give them to I would give them to my mom as a gift. It's like, like a, that is an example and I'd also be like, mom, those could be kinky. It's like a restraint item and jewelry in one. So this box has 11 items that you get. So, and it's such a deal. You get satin robe, sexy game, you get pasties, lube, toy cleaner. And then we already talked about the handcuffs and the panty vibe. So this is such a steal. And this is why we're talking about it on the show, because it is such a good deal. Like a kitten also is... Like a kitten. And typically the box is $99, which is already a great deal. But because you listen to Shameless Sex, you're going to get it for even better. So right now, Like a Kitten is offering our listeners of Shameless Sex 20% off and free shipping. When you go to likeakitten.com slash shameless or enter code shameless at checkout. Again, that's likeakitten.com slash shameless or use code shameless to get 20% off these incredible boxes, likeakitten.com slash shameless. The link is also in the episode description. So go check it out. You will be stoked. You'll be naughty and nice and everything twice. Ooh, and well, it's also a great option if you're just like, I don't really know what to get, but I want to get my partner something sexy. And this has all these different options in there. If you're like, oh, should I get them a vibrator? Should I get them? It has all the things. So yeah, go check it out. And um, April, I'm going to get you one because I'm going to vibrate the shit out of you for the I holidays. feel like Like It Can never disappoints us. Nope, they're they're, they're awesome. They're also yeah. fun to open up the little boxes. It's like, Yeah, it's like fun surprises. It's like Christmas anytime that you order one. I'm like, yeah. even if it's Valentine's Day or whatever, we, we've, had, we've done it before. Remember last year when I dressed up in my Santa baby oh, costume? Yeah. When we opened their last uh, Naughty and Nice and we box. didn't even know what was in it yet. We it didn't like, know, and it was so a surprise. Exciting. And Amy's like, oh, this is fun. Yeah, so. I love surprises. 
prizes are good. Uh, okay, so a couple other product recommendations if you want to bring some sex toys into your holiday game or just into your everyday life. Um, a couple of them are actually anal toys. So um, let's see. Number one, I'm going to recommend this brand called Rian S. R-I-A-N-N-E-S. Separate letter, separate word. Uh, and I'm recommending their booty plug set, first off. Um, this is th- three different butt plugs. So three different size options for you to play with. And I think that's great if you're new to butt play. So it's like or, small, medium, and large? Yes. And they have butt bling on the end that comes out of your your nice little asshole right there. And a little gem there. So a little, a little, little butt bling to show off. That um, is actually really cute. It's adorable. I like when people... Well, not people, but there are there are people that I've seen that have worn butt plugs in various videos or whatnot that have like tails or bling. And I'm like, that is so cute. They're adorable. Yeah. And you're going to basically make your butt um, uh, uh, some jewelry. Basically. A shiny piece of treasure. Yeah. Your butt is a treasure. And a tr- oh, a pirate's booty. A pirate's <laughs> booty. And this comes in black or purple. So great if you want to experiment with some anal play. I like the tapered tip on these plugs. They're really, really great design. They're actually really great. Butt Do they plugs. vibrate or? No vibrating. No vibrating. Okay, nope. so they're yep. like just like a just three three pack sensation. different sizes. Yeah, nice. more for relaxing the ass, and they just look really nice and delicious. So, um, if you want to try any of these products, are actually that I'm going to talk about right now. Um, you can go to purepleasureshop.com, and until December fifteenth of two thousand twenty one, we're doing twenty percent off there, um, and then it's always fifteen percent off at purepleasureshop.com with the coupon code Shameless Six. Um, so this is something you can get later on down the road. Um, another anal product for the penis owning folks we did a recent episode with Forrest from Aneros uh, it's episode 250 if you want to learn more about prostate play is a better way or not better way but an option for penis owners to have more powerful full bodied orgasms uh, so maybe you want to give the gift of more full bodied orgasms to your penis owner in your life um, or maybe to yourself and he talks about their new product the Aneros Helix Sin V which is a vibrating prostate toy uh, and he says it's absolutely amazing that is also at purepleasureshop.com I want to say one thing about that, too, is that that prostate episode with Forrest was so incredible. And he's he's such an educator, not because he was hired to. He was just an avid prostate uh, lover that learned about prostate massage and play and orgasm through just using Aneros products. And yeah. we've been fans of Aneros products. Like you told me about them back when I worked at Pure Pleasure in the store. And I was always so curious because they don't vibrate or anything, but they have like each, each like little accentuation of the, the each product that they make. Uh, and I'm sure the Sin V is even better. Them, There's yeah. so much thought. Yeah. So, and now this one vibrates. And, th- and now yeah. you have a vibrating one. And he was talking about the Super O and, and all, I don't know, that episode's really cool. I mean, I wouldn't give this as a gift to your partner who's like super anti-anal play and they're like, it's an exit only, nothing will ever go in. You're like, here, I'm giving this to you. We're doing this, you know. But to someone that has an opening to, or they want to be able to enhance their orgasmic potential. So it might be a conversation piece before to figure out. Or, or or maybe you don't know, but you know that they're a little more open-minded. But um, yeah, could change their lives and maybe yours too. And remember, if you're putting anything in your butt, always use lube. Yes. Always use some lubrication. Always. I prefer Uber lube. Just saying. Just saying. And the last one I'll say is the Rian S. Bella one. So again, R-I-A-N-N-E and then separate word S with the letter S. Um, the Bella wand, I think, is absolutely beautiful. So it's a waterproof, smaller wand-style vibrator. And wand-style vibrators, they actually are more powerful than non wand style vibrators. So if someone likes power um, and more intensity, this is really great, but it's not big and bulky like some other wands. And it even comes with jewelry. So it's two gifts in one. Um, so it comes with a little cuff bracelet. Uh, it's USB rechargeable. It's nice and compact. And it is adorable and beautiful. And a great gift item, again, if for someone who likes something a little stronger. And wand style vibrators, by the way, are generally used externally. So on the vulva, the clitoris, etc. I Everyone's love wands. April and I are big fans of Talk about wands, too. Oh, you're obsessed with them. I mean, I... I love myself a wand sometimes to the detriment because <laughs> because they they te- they're out. so powerful yeah. that sometimes I'm like oh my god I need a wand I can't really get off from anything else and that's my own your brain? that's my own journey okay your, your, so what's your brain getting stuck on something this idea that this is the only way I get off you know my brain's getting stuck on is the neighbors might think maybe it's cold out there say what's in this drink. This is the weird lyrics. Oh, really? Baby, it's cold. No cabs to be had out there. I wish I knew how. Your eyes are like starlit <laughs> now. To break this spell, I'll take your hat. Your hair looks swell. 
Not lying. <laughs> oh this God. is what this is what it is, y'all. I could keep going, but this isn't about creepy. me saying. It's kind of creepy to me. Uh, it's a little creepy. And I always liked this song until I actually read the lyrics. And I'm like, wow, that could be a little frightful. I love Dean Martin. Mm, I, yeah. love him. I love him. Dean. Well, Dean, how does it end? So it ends with a... Uh, does she <clears> leave <throat> or she stay? Are they banging? There's bound to be talk tomorrow now. Think of my life. Long sorrow. At least there will be plenty of implied if you caught pneumonia and died. I really can't stay. Get over that old out. Baby, it's cold. Baby, it's cold outside. Okay, fine. Just another drink then. That oh. took a lot of convincing. Someone's just submitted. That's the end. <laughs> I could sing it, but no one wants to hear me sing anymore because I'm not a professional. So I don't like coercion one bit. Nope. And now you have it. I just had to. I just had to give that a little bit of uh, of uh, recognition for the fucked up lyrics of that song. All right. And no one ever knew. Now you're gonna listen to it. You're gonna be like, damn, baby, it's cold outside. God damn it. <laughs> I don't want it to be cold. That took a lot of convincing. Now that's, that's why I'm gonna go use a vibrator to <laughs> spice up the mood and make things warm. My Bella wand, oh. baby. Maybe it's yes. cold outside. Well, so the last, uh, in closing, other than April's beautiful music <laughs> that she has here, <laughs> is, you know, the holidays and the winter can be hard um, because it gets darker earlier, at least here in the United States where we are. It gets cold. Uh, and, you know, things like depression and stress and loneliness, they go up. And and then also if we're going to be around families for holidays, and maybe you're not, but if that you're, that's something that's stressful to you, why not add more pleasure into your life now? Really, like if you look at your life right now, look at your next couple weeks, and if you see maybe a little more stress, why not add a little more pre- pre- ple- pleasure to balance that out? So, because maybe you can't get rid of that stress. Like maybe you see your family is always stressful. So just add more nourishment to your life, whether that's more masturbation, more self care, um, more exercise, meditation, exercise, more hot tubs. All more of those orgasms. things do lead to more orgasms. And we've talked about this individually and collectively about how the this the things sometimes that don't feel like they're sexually charged like, like meditation meditation yeah. or exercise can actually lead to more sexual pleasure more sexual wellness and health mm-hmm. in your life and it's all connected it all is connected so do the things that bring you joy and that you feel that your your heart and your life starts to get lit up by and eventually your genitals or your desire Bonus points for doing the things that your genitals get all lit up. Oh yeah, fatal attraction. I'm gonna scene put these number ten ninety two. Lights in my genitals and light yes. them up. Baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> okay, she's your back. genitals are gonna get lit. <laughs> Baby, it's cold outside. Get electrocuted. <laughs> That would be very dark. All right. <laughs> okay, let's go eat something. We went dark and light on this, and hey, that's. The, the, it's the spirit of this this time right this now. Spirit. It's 550 and it's fucking baby, it's dark outside. The crows were going crazy. You said I do. <laughs> we're gonna go get married now. We gotta no, go. I can't <laughs> say who. All right, anyways, we gotta <laughs> just gonna keep Baby, doing it's that. cold outside. <laughs> we're gonna get so many <laughs> bad reviews now. Go ahead. I'm I'm just kidding. I hope that the spirit of this song and the spirit of this holiday episode has inspired you to rate us on iTunes. We love five-star reviews every time. I'm going to invite you to just go ahead and review us. It helps more people find their shameless sex inner workings and to find the random useless knowledge about old school Christmas songs that may or may not be inspiring. And Melrose Place. But I still will probably listen to because I do enjoy the melody. Mm-hmm. And Melrose Place scenes. And Melrose Place. And maybe a few little attractions. Anyway, <laughs> we love you. We love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for being part of the Shameless Sex Revolution. We will see you next Tuesday. Ciao for now. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code shamelesssex at purepleasureshop.com.